Both you watch your heads in close. Good luck to you both. Good luck. So here we go, finally, the talking between these two is over. And that support for Marku, you can hear it in the background. London boxing fans will remember a fighter called Prejnik Kato from back in the day. Another outfit that used to count Round the goal call. Marku's brought a couple of thousand here at least. As we get underway, Marku starting off in the orthodox stance. He can box out of either. We will see him switch during the course of the fight, I'm absolutely sure. You look at them physically, they're very different. Congo, long and lean. Nothing on him at all. Richter is shredded away in yesterday. Marku, thicker around the shoulders, stockier. What they do both have, which is something that makes you very well suited to being a fighter, is ridiculously long arms. Yeah, I think that Florian looks a lot smaller, and he is a lot smaller in stature, but his actually his arm his arm reaches not that too much dissimilar. Kongu set up very very correctly. Good amateur, spent some time on that GB squad. Very well drilled, well honed. He's got that right glove clamped to the side of his face looking to try and work that lead left hand giving a little bit of ground here though Marku making some inroads and actually got into quite a good position there but didn't manage to let his hands go I think that was really small but he did, when he was backed up a little bit on the ropes and he was expecting you know I think that's why his hands are so tight Marku can punch and what he did is he just smothered them straight away so we couldn't get the, the big shots off Sticking with orthodox here, Marku. That right handed stance, Congo just backing up. Good feet. Marku has been patient so far in this opening round, hasn't really let his hands go to any extent. Congo looking for that right hand over the top. See, we see him employ it again as soon as his back touches the rope. He just closes the space and holds on so that Marku can't get let any shots off. Good left hand into the body there from Marku. Congo not really allowing Marku to get off with his shots. He's, he's staying at a distance, always oh, getting in close and smothering him, tying him up. But he's not going to be able to do that for the whole distance and win the fight at some stages. For Chris Congo, Dalton Smith in that Marku corner, just gazing between the ropes. Fantastic win for him against Sir Peter. Brilliant performance. It'll be interesting to see what is next on the horizon for him. I think we hear Grant say that he, he, he would have given Marku that round, and I probably disagree if I'm honest. I thought Congo controlled it really well, and like I said, he, his tactics were spot on. As soon as he's back touches the rope, he holds on. Yeah, looking for the right hand there as soon as Marco goes southpaw. Then his jab got more at the start of the round as well, Congo. Then his hands go more here. Southport is the preferred stance for Marku, that's what he is really, but he does switch a lot, I've seen him boxing both stances. What he can do is give you that squareness of stance at times, which can make it a little bit difficult for your opponent to work out exactly what it is that you're going to do. You can throw the backhand out of either stance, allow that back leg to come through and forward, which you're not really supposed to do, and all of a sudden you switch stance and you're comfortable in either one. I think Congo's a bit of bruising. just sticking to, to what he knows here. There is, you're right, a bit of bruising underneath the left eye there of Marku. Yeah, I think those were the right hands when he went south for Marku. Congo nailed him with some straight rights.
good feint there from Congo as Marku was just closing in. He threw the feint, it gave him something to think about. He hesitated, the Albanian, and then Congo just stepped off to the left hand side. That's a really good job there, but I think Congo's doing a really good job of just frustrating him a little bit, keeping him moving, because Marku has to like set himself. He wants to throw the big shots, the big power shots. The the right eye of Congo. I think there is, yeah. I think there's a little bit of damage underneath that right eye too, or on the corner of it, unless it's transference from Marku, but I think they've both got a slight wound, maybe from a head clash, who knows. Yeah, I think Congo's frustrating Marku. Marku's obviously initiating the attacks, he's, he's trying to pressure Congo, but Congo is not really letting him get the fight at the range he wants to fight at, you know, because he's smothering him up close, and he's, he's staying at a distance, and he's moving, fainting, and nice jab there from Marco, but he's having to work hard just to land a few shots here, good right hand though from Marco, looking to try and finish the round strong here, and back Congo up, he tries to come back with the right hand, and that has got the crowd going, Congo steady sings a bit with a jab to the chest and then a solid right hand straight down the middle yeah just faint the jab then turned into a left hook right hand combination good shots good right hand from marco fight really starting to heat up here absolutely closing stages around two right hand into the body that was a a good again solid punch that just rocked him back onto his heels the referee came over and Indicated to him, I think Tash, that that was caused by a punch. Yeah, I've yeah, seen him sit, telling uh, the people at the board um, over on the other side. It doesn't look particularly serious, so I don't see it having a huge bearing on things. It's right at the outside corner, so if, it, even if it did uh, start to bleed profusely, it'd be just, just on the outside and out of your vision. Control of the range is key here for Congo. He wants to fight, he wants this fight for the long range. Marco wants to sneak in, dip down low and, and, and get it at medium range. If he gets too close, that's when Congo can grab a hold of him, smother him, and then the ref will break them up. So it's just the battle here is whether Congo can keep him at, on the end of that jab or whether Marco can sneak his way in and land that shot at mid-distance. But as he gets close, he's got to be careful not to get too close because that's when Congo can tie him up. I think that's what Bron Smith uh, in the previous round was telling him about. He had the range perfect, and you're getting too close to let him do that. Howard Foster just speaking to Congo about a little touch of holding, and that's what you were talking about, Matt, there, which is that when Marku gets tight, he does look to get a hold of him, just backs his feet up there and finds good distance for the one-two. But he can still smother him, he can still negate him by just stepping to him and staying close to him. He doesn't have to hold him. You know, the ref's going to get on his back and take points, so we can't afford for that to happen. But he can still step up right close to him and stay next to him and, and, and therefore not allow Marco the room to get his shots off. Again, just coming forward there, Marco trying to barrel Congo back into the ropes. Congo able to turn off the ropes comfortably enough. He's looking nice and sharp here, Congo. Marco is the kind of fighter who will keep bringing the heat. Confident that he can bring it to bear at some point. Left hands landed by both of them there in quick succession. And we did see Congo in his fight against Echo Esselman start well, build up a lead at halfway and then get overhauled in the second half of the fight. Some people I've spoken to wonder about his stamina over the 12 rounds Congo, basically because he's six feet tall and making this weight for him must be hard, hard work, although it's what he's always done. I think that's all my, always my worry for, for Congo. Um, you know, he's, 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 he's beaten Marku now by the speed and, and, and the agility in his feet, but as that slows down and as the fight goes on, Mark will have a, bit, a little bit more success. Yeah, he's boxing well, Congo. He's rolling after the shots, landing the right hands, then rolling underneath, coming under the left hook. He's not standing in front of Marco, frustrating him, but can he sustain it? That's the key. Whatever your argument is, whatever your viewpoint is, you can find information that will back up and fit that argument and make it very, very convincing.
right hand down into the body from Congo a few seconds ago and then as Marku looked to try and move in on him on the ropes he took that step in and grabbed the hold of him that was what you were talking about Matt in the previous round but Marku does manage to make an impression on the ropes there uh, an untidy looking left hand but it got through and then the jab there too you know, uh, Marku's trying to slip and duck and come underneath steal half a yard and then spring up with the jab He's got to be careful as well, Marco, with that that like um, that pull up of the shorts. You know, he, he's still well within range for Congo to be able to hit him when he does it. It's actually pretty surprising how often fighters do that. He's pulled those shorts up pretty high as well at the front, up over the top of the protector. The referee might get them taken down a touch at some point. Congo with a right hand into the body, Marco missing with the right and the left, and Congo working well off the ropes there. Great uppercut again. Good boxing. Landed the uppercut, then just turned away, pivoted around that front foot. I can hear Grant Smith from here saying, hit him to the body and, the, and warning the ref about the holding. He's pretty vocal in the corner, Grant Smith. You can hear him above almost any crowd come fight night again that's good from Congo kind of a reverse one two let up with the right hand then the left uppercut but Marku trying to come back into it himself here as I said previously he will keep the faith he will keep coming forward he will back his chin and his ability to wear his opponent down Marku's got to be careful with the, the, the back of the head shots I think he's already been warned same as Congo with the holding but Good body shot went in there from Marco. Just pushing off with the forearm there, Marco. He's had a little bit of a rub on his face with the heel of his glove at one point as well. And he'll look to try and do that when he gets up close as much as he can without incurring too much of the referee's wrath. Great one two at the end of the round there. With the eye there attending to it but it's a scratch really more than anything else which is good because although winning by technical knockout by cutting an opponent is a perfectly legitimate way to win it's not really ever one we want to see good jab there counter jab almost from Congo Marco looking for a big overhand right but was short with it your sharp left hand work from Congo not just the jab with the jab to the body but the faint the jab lead left hook He's got, and he's got to do that, he's got to keep mixing it up, he can't afford to become predictable because Marku's trying to read the jab, slip inside it and then come back with his own jab. So he's got to keep varying the left hand work, Congo can't afford to become predictable. Landed the lead left hand there, Marku. He didn't really move in behind it. He's got his left arm trapped there by Congo. Referee Howard Foster is alive to these tricks. I think they feel like they're getting away with them at times, but they're not, are they? You're seeing them all. Not at all, yeah. So Marku leaning to the left and jumping with the jab. The Congo should faint the jab, throw this lead right, a short right hand left hook, try and walk him onto it. I don't think, sorry, I don't think Congo wants to get into a tussle and um, match with, with Marco. He is physically very strong and also that zaps your energy as well. It's one of those fights where when you look at the two of them physically next to each other with the referee, at the start, you feel like you know what each one of them needs to do. The tall, lean, angular Congo needs to keep it on the outside, and he does have the technique to do it, whereas Marco has got to find a way past that jab, and it's turning out to be exactly that. Yeah, Marco's keeping him under pressure, though, making him move urgently, not at his own pace, trying to force the pace, make him work harder than he wants to. And then trying a good body shot there, though, for Congo. 
And we don't know how the judges are scoring this, but come the end of this round, we'll be five deep. And I don't think Marco will have much on the board. Good left hand there, though, from him. I mean, I've got Congo ahead by a few rounds, but... You know, again, we said it before, he has been six rounds ahead before and ended up losing the fight, so... I think we've got a good second half to come here. Right hand there from Congo as Marco just tried to barrel in. He is bringing the heat, he's putting him under pressure. He's definitely taken plenty out of Congo's tank in this first half. Second round six. Round six. So into the second half of the flight, Florian Marku in the red and black with the Albanian eagle on the side of the shorts, Chris Congo in the black and white. And there's the viewers' verdict, 3-2 to Congo, you've got it at home. I wouldn't necessarily argue with that. Some of these rounds have been pretty close. I would say that Congo is ahead at halfway. How far he's ahead could be absolutely crucial. As we wait, we see what unfolds in round six through to ten. Congo starting well in this one. You know, Mark is taking the fight too, Congo, so Congo's really got to mix things up, lots of feints, jab, head, body, maybe faint the jab, walk him onto the right hand, left hook, he can't afford, he's got to get his respect, he's got to make Mark who think twice about coming, so that when he does faint, he buys the feints, and he's got to do that by hitting him with something hard, getting his respect. He really took his feet with him. He had to travel quite a long way to get there, but was kind of scurrying in almost. He just gave him that platform to punch from, and he's just trying to pin Congo back into the corners here. He's doing really well. You know, when he's back on the ropes, he's just spinning him off. You know, before he was holding a little bit and then put trying to walk him back, but now he's... he's, he's that was good backhand. Sharp right hand there from Congo, nice and accurate as well, and then he found that space, that open canvas up to his left-hand side. That's good for Congo, you know, jabbing the head, jabbing the body, using the feints. But to say, they're in it. He's definitely sitting down on his backhand a lot more than he was earlier. And that jab to the stomach or to the chest for Congo works well because it's a big target, that's also of Marcus, and it's the area of him that will move the least. And it just causes him to take that step up and start again. Marku, in this kind of position, that's really where he needs to make it count. But Congo answered him back and steps off to the left back. So that's the position he's in. Yeah, definitely. Especially not in the division that he's in as well. It's an exciting division, especially domestically. And there's lots of fights out there for him. But he's got to have that step up to, to progress. Into the seventh. Good jab there from Congo, fainted the first jab almost, then followed through with the second one. He shakes his head there, Marku. But Congo has started this round very nice and busy as he finished that previous one.
that's some good body work on the inside there from Congo. You wouldn't think that was necessarily his range. He waits, you can see him just wait. There has a little pause for, uh, for Mark, who's uh, uh, opening of the arms, and he just gets him twice underneath. You see it again there. Nice left hand to the body there from Congo. Mark, has got a bit of a problem here because the momentum is going against him in the second half of this fight so far in round six and seven. And by our reckoning, that is not what he would have needed to happen. Congo's got some, as I said about the previous fight, Matt, some wind in his sails here, and boxing this is really not good well. for Marku. Yeah, boxing really well here, boxing with confidence, mixing it up, rolling out, letting his shots go, landing them, and then rolling out underneath, not standing there too long, waiting for Marku to come back at him. And this round in particular, Marku really hasn't had any success at all, and Congo boxing with real confidence. I think the viewers at home give him the first two rounds, so maybe it's not that desperate time yet if the judges have scored it the same. It's just the direction it's heading, and he needs something, doesn't he? And if he can't get it in the final minute of this round, it needs to come in that eighth round because the momentum is with Congo, and we're not too far away from the finish tape, and Marco has got to try and do something to turn that around. But as you say, there is still time remaining yet. He picked uh, Marco off with a great backhand as he came in. Good work, lovely. Just threaded that uppercut through the middle, snapped the head back and then rolled underneath. Boxing really well here, Congo. That was fantastic from Congo. A good, uh, sorry, a good great backhand there, but it was a good um, hook to the body as well, just on the outside. Right for him, it really has. It's bewildering, really, when you think about it, that he had four white qualifiers. 17 professional fights in a row. He's won 16 by knockout, the British and Commonwealth champion. I took quite a long time to be convinced by him, but he just kept winning, and he's got some heavy, heavy hands on him. I genuinely think it's between him and Callum Simpson, who are the most improved boxers that I've seen. It... It's round eight. Grant Smith was reading the right act of Marku as he sat on his stool in between rounds. I think they know that this is almost the point of no return for him now. He's got to get something done in this round. He needs to win this round quite badly from where I'm sitting. So the referee is having a word with Barry Smith, Congo's trainer. Yeah, any more warnings and it could be disqualified, so it's got to stop. He's having a good chat with both of them. I think Congo's maybe, I didn't quite get captured that, but I think Congo's maybe about the holding. Yeah. It's what he's been speaking to them about previously in the fight. Howard Foster's the one in there. It doesn't look from where we're sitting like it's been... A fight particularly littered by fouls, it certainly hasn't been spoiled by it in any way. This is the best Chris Congo has ever boxed. You know, he jabs good, he's mixing it up with straight right hands. Every time he lands a shot, he's rolling out underneath, not standing there waiting for the shots coming back at him. You know, he's really frustrating Marco. He's fighting and triggering and making him throw and making him think something's coming, getting a reaction, and he's responding. These last few rounds, he started well, he's look good from the beginning but six seven and now eight he's clicked through the gears really he's grown in confidence and he's almost doing what he wants in there we talk about ring generalship you know he's never allowed marku to pin him in the, anywhere in the ring where he didn't want to be when he was backed up on the ropes even early on straight in smothered him spun him got back into the center of the ring grant smith is very animated in the corner there and there's a brother obed putting the gum shield in you very well Marco's really going to take the fight to Congo now, slipping away from him. Absolutely, he's just got to throw caution to the wind now. And that was a punch around the back of the head there for Marco. The 
a punch around the back of the head and Howard Foster has spoken to him on numerous occasions and he takes the point and you can't really have any complaints there Florian Marky because they've both been warned they were both told I think that's a sign of frustration as well from Marku that Definitely. he just can't do anything about it. That's exactly what it is. He's just, you know, he can't pin him down. He can't get to him. And Congo just letting his hands go. The odd shake of the head every now and again from Marku, but that's all he's really able to offer Two at the moment. Great body shots that went in there. I do think that a great left hook though. Caught Congo high on the head, but he seems steady enough as Marku tries to close in. There was a good left hook there from Marku though, and he tried to follow it up. I don't know, did the second shot land? Couldn't see it. The hook landed high on the head of Congo, which can sometimes, of course, be a huge, huge problem. It can really scramble the senses, but in this instance, it hasn't. But it was some welcome success there for Marku. But this has been another very good round for Congo. Who has got the finish line in his sights now. Yeah, big round. Fringe in the way that you have been so far again. Then a point will go and that's exactly what happens. If you're Marku, you probably... Well, I know I would be a little bit worried now. Because these are the rounds that you expect Congo to slow down. And he still looks, you know, like he's got his senses. He still looks sharp. Marco's just got to throw caution to the wind here now and go for it. He hasn't faded at all, Congo. If anything, he's got stronger as the fight has gone on. Marco definitely needs both these rounds and knockdowns. If you're Congo, you're going to grow in confidence. These, like I said, these are the rounds that everyone thinks you're going to fade. And the more reckless Marco gets going for it, the more opening he's going to leave for Congo, who's razor sharp, to counter him. He just has to keep pressing the action here, Marku, and believe, stick to that belief that he will get to him. That's all he can do here, really. It's just maintain that resolution that it will begin to work. Left hand there, didn't land particularly clean. Head movement's been good from Congo, really good. Any time they get close, he's there, he's dipping to the side, rolling underneath, rolling back out. He hasn't become a... He's never allowed himself to become a stationary target. But he's backed up onto the ropes. He steps to Mark, who ties him up, spins him, gets back into the centre of the ring. Really good ring generalship from uh, Congo tonight. He keeps landing a, 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 just a clean sweep backhand all the way through. He's been so accurate with that. He measured it really well. Hasn't sent it all that far short right hand but he's found the target again and again it's okay being the bigger puncher in Marku and you can see that Congo is wary of the shot but you've got to land them into the final minutes of round right, right hand solid right hand again there really sat down on that one he enjoyed that you can see the smile on his face as well he's just grinning at Marfi with no you can see that Marfi will get frustrated with that yeah just, and he, you know he nailed him he walked him onto it and it, again good variety from Congo he's very good been very good with the left hand the jabs the lead left hooks and then to switch it and lead him on with bring him onto the lead right hand that's another thing now Marco's got to think about it's just dipping down every time Marku gets a little bit closer, then, you know, Marku's having to go over him, and then... So, one more round to go now. Until those heavyweights will stride to the ring. Final round. And Marku... Has just got to go hell for leather here. He needs a knockout. And I agree, Matt, that this is the best performance we've seen from Chris Congo. Eats a right hand there. It's not over quite yet, but he has been excellent.
And let's be honest, they had to be. He's had to be disciplined, he's had to be focused, he's had to stick with the tactics. His tactics, it's tactics that he applied for the first few rounds of holding. It might not be great to watch, but it's it, strategic-wise, it's brilliant. Yeah, they had a tactic spot on, and he's both been razor sharp as well. He's always been a fighter who's never strayed very far away from the gym, and you can see that because he hasn't boxed since January last year. But there's no hint of any ring rust as people sometimes oh, describe it. And there's that left uppercut, a reverse one two again. They're led off with the right hand, dipped to his left hand side, through the left hand in from the angle. Look at that, it's just brilliant. And then he goes underneath. Marco has to come over the top. A longer right hand that time. Mark is still trying to just roll forward. Congo's dictate the terms tonight. He's controlled the pace, controlled the range. Brilliant uppercut that went up the middle just as Mark was trying to set himself to throw a big shot. You can see that, you know, Congo is wearier than big shots and Mark who knows he's got it. You can see him looking for it. But there's the fitness and conditioning because the big left hand came in from Marku. He dipped the knees and rolled away to his right hand side. The upper body movement has been really, really good. That lateral movement. And you've got to be very fit to be able to maintain it to that level all the way through to the end. I mean, we've seen it from Vidal earlier, but this has got a lot more action and been a lot more uh, shots thrown in between. Yeah, much, much higher intensity in this fight. That was the word I was looking for. So, final few seconds of what has been a good, good watch. Marco has stuck to his task. He's just never really had too much joy. There's not been an awful lot that's happened in there to encourage him, particularly Great in the second half of the fight. But he did land a right hand there. That goes about both corners, playing victory. But Chris Congo.